Okay, welcome everybody. This is Wendy Cherry and we are here in the sanctuary on the Sanctuary Radio Show in the flow. We haven't done a show in a while, uh, but we're here. We have some really important information to, sh to share with you. Let me go to my Facebook page first. Welcome as you're starting to come in um, and share this with my regular page. And I encourage you to please comment, to please subscribe to my Facebook page, and to please share, because this is very good information, as always. So just give me a second. I am trying to make this, um, share this, share this live, and then I'll introduce my guest, and then we'll get right to it. Okay, let's see. While I see lightning outside of my window. Hold on. Okay. Okay. So we got that done. And so, again, welcome to the Sanctuary Radio Show in the flow. Today's guest is Eureka Huggins Axum, and she is from Adasi. So, Yuri, as she is called, is the co-founder and director of international affairs of the African Diaspora Ancestral Commemoration Institute, which is known by Adasi. So welcome, Yuri. Thank you so much, Wendy. And yes. hello to your listening audience or yes. viewing audience. Yes, nice to have you again. So we had um, Yuri back in October to talk about ancestral altars and ways to set up ancestral altar altars and their importance. So welcome back into the sanctuary. So what we're gonna talk about today um, is very important and it is how to commemorate our ancestors. So we are in the 400th year of having been kidnapped and brought to Jane um, on August 20th, 1619. The first enslaved Africans arrived at, in the British colony in Jamestown, Virginia. So I live in Virginia. So it happened around here, right? And so this is the year of return. A lot of um, countries in Africa, specifically Ghana, are welcoming uh, us back home um, to just explore the culture, explore the land. And I'm very grateful to have been able to have um, been to the continent twice in the last few years. So I feel like everybody should um, take the time to do that if you can. And this is also um, us commemorating the Ma'afa. So Yuri, can you explain to us what Adasi does and what the Ma'afa is? Definitely. Um, so ADASI is the acronym for the African Diaspora Ancestral Commemoration Institute. We were founded in 1992, so we're approaching 27 years now. Wow. And it was founded in order to institutionalize the commemoration or the remembrance of our African ancestors who perished in the Middle Passage, the millions of men, women, children, and babies who were kidnapped, trafficked, and shipped to the Americas, who were taken from the interior of Africa to the coast and to the Americas. And so we, uh, in, in Adasi, we institutionalize the remembrance. We do it in a very progressive way so that we better determine and understand our circumstances. We look at the conditions that we're in and we look at the contemporary manifestation of the um, enslavement, um, the the fear, the shame, the pain, and the guilt that we still carry in our mm -hmm. DNA. Mm -hmm. And by remembering, we begin to break that collective amnesia. Because if you ask many of our people and you say, uh, do you remember those who perished in the Middle Passage? Uh, it's a blank stare. Um, it's almost as though it's, we, were, we are still so traumatized that we haven't begun to deal with that healing and the remembrance and the restoration that is necessary to take place. And so this is what Adasi does. And we, we do so, as I said, in a very contemporary way. We present scholars, artists, activists, spiritual and religious leaders who can talk about the implications, but also talk about what are some of the things that we need to do in order to heal ourselves in ways that have been uh, through generations that is passed on into the, in the DNA. 
how do we deal with our healing, but more so how, we, how do we deal with our restoration? Um, because it's important, as we remember, we, we deal with our current circumstances. Um, we look at the strength and the determination of these ancestors, and we draw upon that. And then we celebrate the, 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 um, the fortitude that they have in overcoming obstacles of enormous magnitude. So we draw upon all of these through our various um, programs and activities, and of course, definitely through the annual uh, international commemoration for the Ma'afa. Oh. And, okay. And as you mentioned, uh, the Ma'afa, the Ma'afa is a, a key Swahili term that was um, coined by um, Dr. Marimba Ani, one of our very well-known scholars, and it really means a great disaster. And so uh -huh. we use that term because we did suffer a great disaster in our history. We did. So I'd like to reverse engineer a little bit and talk a little bit about exactly what you said. So this stuff is passed down into our DNA. And so for anybody who knows my, so this is the sanctuary radio show. This is the in the flow version. But on my regular in the sanctuary on DC radio, I had, um, Dr. Patricia Newton, come on just a few weeks ago to talk about um, epigenetics and the way that the pain and the trauma has been passed down to our um, to us, the you know the ancestors of those who went through all of those horrific things. And it's you know a, a lot of people say, why can't people just act right? Mm -hmm. You know, they they speak so poorly of us and. Um, we have so many stereotypes that have been put on us, um, but it's deeper than just acting right. It's, there's so much pain and trauma that has transpired and just um, horrific things that get trapped into our DNA. So they call it um, epigenetics is what happens to the body when certain signals in the DNA turn on and off based mm -hmm. on your food, based on your environment, based on how you process stress. There are lots of different factors. And when you sit in a, every human being comes from a mama, every human being comes from a womb. Yes. And most of the time, trauma and pain and those types of things happen in the womb of a woman. And she holds that pain there. So then you are then the baby sitting in that womb and you are being imprinted. You are That's being right. imprinted. So I always use the, um, I always use the, the, the camera click of scandal. In the beginning of those who watch scandals, you always saw ching, ching, ching is an imprint. So the pain imprinted into the baby, the horror imprinted into the baby, that mm -hmm. terrible food, nasty water, crazy new environment that we've never heard of before is all imprinted into this baby. And then the baby's born mm -hmm. and then the cycle continues until, yep. you, until you break it. Until you break that cycle. You cannot break it unless you know what it is. Right. So now we are starting to know what it is. It is a, a, a coin phrase, mm -hmm. post-traumatic slavery disorder. Yes. There's some great literature out on it. You mm -hmm. can either watch my uh, last show with Dr. Newton on my Facebook page or on my YouTube channel, and she breaks it down. And we also talk about tools on how to um, mitigate some of that because it's mm -hmm. going to be generational. It took 400 years for us to get this, exactly. to get this built up. So we're going to need to detox it. Detoxing comes in layers in layers, sort of like mm -hmm. an onion opening up. You, you heal one part and then you have to heal another part. So that is what you are doing through this commemoration and through these types of prog um, programs and events that you're going to share more with us. But I just wanted the um, audience and the listeners to know, including my baby sister who is here, mm -hmm. Jackie, um, you know, I wanted them to know that it's deeper than just, we need to pull it together. Yeah. Okay. No, you know what? You have provided an excellent um, um, description of exactly what it is. And Dr. Newton, we know her very well because we actually did a creative space and altar for her yes. uh, at the last um, conference that they had, the National Association for Black Psychologists uh, in, in Maryland. 
And so we know her very well. And also on our Adasi, one of our Adasi advisors is Dr. Kevin Washington, okay. who is the past president of the National Association of Black Psychiatrists and Psychologists. And so they talk about that. Yeah. Um, they talk about how this trauma, how it is passed on and uh, ways in which we can heal. And I think you began to touch on some of that. And certainly um, some of the work that Adasi does, it touches a little on it, mm -hmm. but it is so vast. I mean, okay. just think about what the veterans go through. Right. And we know um, that they have to go through counseling and even counseling doesn't always get always to the root of it. And right. so you're right. We've been carrying this for 400 years. Right. Right. You know? So I feel like we need to have a little grace with ourselves. You yes, know? we do. And, and that comes in just getting to know ourselves, getting to appreciate our journey. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that in certain generations, and this is in all, I mean, I, I'm realizing this, this is in all um, cultures who have experienced trauma because many of them have. Mm -hmm. And there's certain generations tried to just not talk about it. Right. So exactly. there was a silent wall. So um, genetically, like epigenetically and in the DNA is there and you're responding to it, but you just don't know why because mm -hmm. your parents didn't talk about it. So, you know, there have been, None like ours, and I know that none like mm -hmm. the Papa, but there no. have been other things that have happened to other types of people, and their people also have tried to just um, make it silent and hope that it would go away, not realizing the epigenetic effect and long term effect it would have on their offspring. So, again, epigenetic, your, your signals, um, signals right. in your DNA turning on and mm -hmm. turning off. Um, depending on environment, depending on food, depending on stress, depending on uh, all these different types of things that happen, things turn on and off and then the body starts to evolve a certain way. So I love the part that you said about the restoration. Mm -hmm. You have to deal with it because you can't fix what you won't face, but then definitely offering tips and things that people can do even if they've never heard of this concept before. Exactly, exactly. You think, oh, it's just slavery, we should just get over it. Absolutely not. And I think some of that too is also because, um, you know, many people try to put us into that, our history into that four year, 400 years, 500 years of right. enslavement. Um, but our history is much more, at least you know it from the beginning of, of mankind. We Absolutely. birthed all human beings. We gave Absolutely. this world the greatest civilizations and what people didn't steal from us, they borrowed and they transmitted and turned it into something else. But but critical to the, the, the healing and the restoration is knowing who you are, Absolutely. knowing our history. And that's some of the work that we do in Adasi because we can even look at just the, the 15th century, look at the University of San Cori in Timbuktu, look at the Mali Empire, look at all these great empires that existed and look at who came into Africa to study at the feet of African scholars. If we understand who we are, then we, it'll be better for us to deal with that trauma. But if we only box ourselves into that trauma, of course, nobody wants to remember that. Right, <laughs> absolutely. And you know, Tony Browder, you know. Our brother, Tony, Tony Browder. Yes. Our brother, Tony Browder, he told me something very powerful just in December after our metamorphosis. So I studied with Tony Browder. I went on a two week, um, study tour, field wow. tour to yes. Kemet, Egypt with him mm -hmm. because I read his books, but I don't believe what everybody says. I like to be able to go see stuff for myself. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So I went and, you know, talking about epigenetics and talking about these types of things that affect us, you know, we, we as a people have some things that are coded into us, um, like a fear of lack because we've always mm -hmm. had things taken away, a fear of loss. But he also reminded me that we still have the, the, the DNA from those power kings and queens and those people who came from East Africa because what happens was East Africa was the beginning of recorded history, but there was six to eight migrations West. Yes. And so I know that I traced to Cameroon and to Sierra Leone. So I know that it still came that power still transferred and translate all the way on that migration west. It and, then it and then it came here and it's sitting here in Virginia, right? So he told me, don't forget that piece. Very, he, he told me that. 
And I always remember that I don't have to just remember the trauma part. I can mm-hmm. remember the glory days. Yes. And then always remember that my people created everything. And just like you said, Yuri, they steal it and they and they commodify it and whatever. But I have a whole different sense of peace about everything yes. as I'm learning slowly but surely more knowledge of self. Mm-hmm. So it's important. So Adasi, how did you decide to one day create this amazing organization? So the impetus behind the founding of Adasi was um, ancestor Babaka Josephine Jai, who is uh, who was the curator of the slave house on Gory Island. Okay. And he visited us in Washington, D.C. at Conqueron, West African Dance Company studio. Okay. And one of the questions that I asked was, um, do, is there a day of remembrance for us in Senegal uh, for those who were taken or stolen? And he said, no. And I thought, you know, and we, we started having conversation and we thought about, my gosh, how could y'all not, how could y'all forget right. that your people were taken? How, I mean, they too are traumatized. Yeah. Yeah. And so that is how the discussion started. And our sisters, Mama Paula and Mama Gaza, we began having these conversations. And so it was a, as a result of him. And so one of the first scholars in the U.S. who we actually went to to have this conversation about Adasi and what should we do was Dr. John Henry Clark. And ah. we, would, we would take trips up to New York to talk yes. to Dr. Clark about Adasi, about our mission, um, even the dates for the June commemoration. And so for the first couple of years before he transitioned to the ancestors, he was our advisor. Wow. And he would tell us who to call, mm-hmm. which scholars to include, what mm-hmm. we need to do. And so we are truly, truly blessed that Dr. Clark has his footprints and his hands and his spirit and his energy in the founding of Adasi. And if any of your viewing audience don't know who John Henry Clark is, your homework, as soon as you're done today, is to go online, John Henry Clark. Yes. That is all you need. Yes, so I will put his name up here and you can Google it because all of his information, so many of his um, oh my gosh, his videos, many of his videos. So he basically changed my life. Yes. The video because I got hit. So for me, I um, Yuri doesn't know me, didn't know me then, but I came to when we had Dr. Joseph Ben oh, Dr. Ben, yeah. yeah, Dr. Ben's ascension um ceremony at. Um, Thurgood Marshall. Thurgood Marshall. Yes. And so I saw this beautiful, amazing altar. I had never seen anything like this <laughs> altar in my life. So she's going to talk a little bit about altars. I wrote that down because we can't, t- we can't do anything without that, talking about the altar. And, um, you know, you explained it about it. We went over. I got to like take a little stone off mm-hmm. and I have it still on my altar. Oh, wonderful. And, um, you know, somebody was talking about Dr. Clark and um, I got online and I started and I basically <laughs> absorbed so much information. He's witty, you know, very smart, asks good questions, has, you know, has very pretty much like to the point. Um, so I loved it. And so, you know, check it out if you he can. Has, yeah. I mean, Dr. Clark is a scholar of scholars. Yes. He is the person that our scholars look up to. He was a mentor to Malcolm X um, and a master teacher. Yes. I one of the, um, master there is a free yes. online video of him and his life that was created by Wesley Snipes and is called John Henry Clark. A great and mighty walk. A great and mighty walk. Yes, a great and mighty walk. So I will write that down because I I saw that. I actually showed it to my daughter when she was like 12 or 13 because I just want her to see. He had some great questions as a little child to his grandmother about, you know, why didn't anybody um, look like him, you know, as far as the the, uh, people who were uplifted in the Christian community. They didn't look like him. So I'm putting that up into the show notes and then you all can definitely check that out. Um, So I appreciate you and I thank you and those who worked with you to create Dasi. So let's talk about 
Um, why do you think it's even important for us to commemorate these ancestors of the Middle Passage? And then also, why do you include those who survived? Sure. Um, we commemorate those who perished. Um, well, I should ask the question. If your mother or brother or sister, somebody close to you passes away, what do you do? Do you have a service for them? Mm -hmm. Do you remember them in some way, form, shape, or fashion? Um, well, why have we not done that for them? Remember, these are the mothers, fathers, daughters, sons, brothers, sisters, aunties, uncles mm -hmm. who are related or maybe related to us in some way who perish. Right. Some jumped overboard in resistance uh, on the slave ships. Mm -hmm. And so they are nameless and faceless to us. And so by remembering, we begin to restore their dignity and we begin to also restore their humanity because it was taken from them. And so in doing so, as we begin to commemorate or to honor them, we also begin that healing process for ourselves. And so this is, um, you know, it's, it's, it's important that we do it. And it, I mean, there's so many things that are linked to each other, that trauma, by remembering we begin the healing process, by restoring the pride and the dignity and the humanity of those nameless, faceless ancestors who we, we just cannot even connect with. Right. And we begin to restore ourselves. Right. So that it's like a whole cycle. Right. You know? And so, again, that part of that, that healing, that remembrance, that restoration comes from out of that trauma. But then the restoration of who we are as people of African descent, as those who gave birth to all human beings on this planet, that's part of the restoration process. Right. OK, that sounds beautiful. Now, what are some practical ways? So people think this happened so long ago. Now we have explained epigenetics. So be, be clear, you're still feeling some of these things, some of the things that you might be feeling, anxiety, like um, some of the symptoms of PT, post-traumatic slavery disorder mm -hmm. are being, un, being able to sleep, not being able to sleep, right. anxiety, anger, all these different, what are some practical 2019, 400 years later, things that we can do that honors, honors our ancestors um, of the Ma'afa and also helps us understand more of who we are? Sure, I mean, some, some practical things that we do, we begin by first remembering. Mm -hmm. We gather with friends and families to begin to have a discussion, read books that are written by and for um, by black authors like John Henry Clark, mm -hmm. Francis Cress Welsing, mm -hmm. Ivan Van Sertema, who wrote many books, including the African presence in early Europe. The Af the, uh, they came before Columbus um, and many other scholars uh, that you can find in, if you go into many black owned bookstores or you Google online, I think even at um, Tony Browder or even on Adasi, yeah. there's a list of, of, of um, black owned books that you should, um, I think in, in begin to read and have a discussion. Paint a picture of what you think the ancestors would look like. Mm -hmm. Write a song or a poem for them. Plant a tree in your yard as your memorial to the ancestors. These are just very practical, practical things that we can do. Have your children begin to speak to the elders and find out and begin to record your history. Mm -hmm. And as you begin to do that, you begin to remember. You begin the part of that, that, that disconnect that we have. These are some really practical ways that we do. And then of course, in Adasi, we create these sacred spaces as our memorials to the ancestors. So, so what again, do sacred spaces look like? The, the, well, um, for Adasi, they can be very elaborate, as you yeah. can tell. Yeah. Um, and again, these sacred spaces, it's just a space where you can um, commune with the ancestors, but you can begin to reconnect with that divinity in you. These sacred spaces or these altars, and certainly we know this in the Black church, mm -hmm. people go down to the altar. Yeah. They, they go down to the altar to have their connection, to begin to commune. And so what we do, our, our sacred spaces in Adasi are artistically created because we are artists as well in Adasi. And so we've created hundreds of altars and no two has been the same. 
and we create it based on the occasion, but it is also a way to connect. So every single item on the altars that we create are symbolic, either for that occasion, but definitely symbolic to help us to connect with the ancestors. And, and you know, people riding, we live in Washington DC area, riding down any street in Washington DC or even riding down 95, mm -hmm. you will see an altar to people who have passed. Exactly. Washington DC mm -hmm. is pretty, um, normal to see a teddy bear hanging around right. a tree That's an altar. Or, or some like, you know, spirit bottles sitting outside or mm -hmm. pictures in other cultures. You'll see people putting up candles and photos and yes. roses and all these different types of things. So you don't have to think of it as something that you can't connect with. Mm -hmm. think of it as something um, that makes you feel connected to that person. So in my home, I have a small little altar area. And I just have photos of my um, loved ones. And I got the great opportunity to trace my ancestry via African ancestry to Cameroon on my maternal side. Wow. So I went to Cameroon and went to this beach. We went to a place, um, Limbe Beach, but it's also near a place called Bimbia, Bimbia. where they say that, um, you know, many of the enslaved people were, that's where they were kidnapped. And that was the last place that they were when they were in Cameroon. Yeah. So we go and I just felt like I needed to make some kind of um, offering to this yes. grandmother because it's on my maternal side. So that means it's my grandmother's 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 all the way down. She survived because I'm standing here. That's right. She survived because I'm standing here. So I was just, I just had like, you know, my travel stuff with me. I, I dug a, a old rusty penny out the bottom of my bag <laughs> and I had a piece of Trader Joe's ginger that had sugar on it just in the bottom of my bag. I took those things and I threw the penny into the ocean. Yes. And I said, thank you. I am forever changed mm -hmm. because of this experience. Mm -hmm. One, and mm -hmm. I plan to change the trajectory of my family with this. Yes. Giving you thanks. So that was one. And then with the ginger, it was a bittersweet moment. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, I'm sorry that she was snatched out of her home and had to leave her loved ones and had to travel this crazy road. However, I'm grateful that I'm here. And so I will always honor her. So a little bit of sand from the beach mm -hmm. is on my altar as well. Yeah. See, and so, that's practical. That is, that's a very practical. practical thing that you can do. And I mean, some people um, create these small sacred spaces at home, and sometimes it's, it's, it's a rock. Sometimes it's just something that symbolizes something that means something a, a that has a special meaning to that individual or someone in their family or a color. And that is your sacred space where maybe if you, if you do go to church every week, maybe you can get to church on a Sunday. But every day you can... Say a little prayer. I, you know, I grew up in Trinidad and I can okay. tell you, um, my aunties, my uncles, everyone that I knew, and they were all different religious backgrounds. They had a little altar mm -hmm. in their home with a little plant, with a candle, some water. They may have a pitcher or some symbol that connects them to the creator, to the divinity within them and to help get some guidance. And so that's a sacred space. That's a sacred yes. space. The funny thing is I have a sweet potato on my <laughs> altar right now for my grandma because she used to make me sweet potato pies when I was little. You connect with so her. So I just was like, I saw the sweet potato in the, in the uh, in, in my groceries. I hadn't used it. I wasn't going to use it. And I just said, this is, this is to my grandma. So I went and had a little chuckle with her about those sweet potato pies she used to make me. So it's still sitting there. <laughs> so that those are ways that you can, you know, um, create a sacred space. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about your events that you have coming up. So this year is our 27th annual international African diaspora ancestral commemoration. Okay. And uh, I should back up and say that we do have sites in Senegal, Nigeria, Brazil, and we just started a site in Cameroon mm -hmm. and they're primarily young people in okay. universities. Mm -hmm. And so they do also carry on the work of Adasi by preserving culture and remembering the ancestors. Okay. So in June, it's the second weekend in June, um, June 8th and June 9th every year. And what we do is we 
uh, gather as Union Temple Baptist Church for prayers and libations, song and poetry. And we have a nice create uh, altar that we create for the ancestors to remember. Mm -hmm. And then we process, we have a drum procession from Union Temple Baptist Church down to the Anacostia River. Everyone wears white because mm -hmm. white represents the spirit world of the ancestors. And as we are processing, in a way, we are retracing those footsteps of those ancestors as they were taken from the in interior. Mm -hmm. And so as we're retracing, we're also healing and we're singing and we're drumming. And then we go under the 11th Street Bridge. Mm -hmm. um, the 11th Street Bridge was um, known previously as the Navy Yard Bridge. It is a historical site because it was the bridge that represented the pathway from slavery in Maryland to emancipation in DC. Wow. And so we go right beneath that bridge mm -hmm. and we do a spiritual healing ceremony and everyone is involved. We have drumming, there's a little ritual that we allow everyone to do to cleanse their, you know, their spiritual aura, to mm -hmm. say a prayers, to put out their offering, their blessings, their desires. And then we have them um, deposit that into the the river, the Anacostia River. It's no pollution, mind you, okay? Yeah. And, um, and the river is important because the river, for the Yoruba people, um, the river represents um, um, Mama Oshun, mm -hmm. the river goddess. Mm -hmm. And we understand from those who practice um, the Yoruba um, practition or in Santeria or in Brazil, that river goddess Oshun came with us when we were captured. Many of our ancestors came from Nigeria and Cameroon, of course. Mm -hmm. But these are just some of the small symbols that we allows us to kind of go back and capture a little bit of who we are right? and begin that healing and continue that healing and that restoration. So the ancestors are happy when we remember them and we restore their dignity and we restore their humanity. It's so beautiful. I have been three times in the last <laughs> three years I have been to this. I brought family. I brought my daughter. And, you know, it's it's an interesting thing to see, especially if you have never seen anything like that, because it really is, you know, some of the ancestors and deities, they come and they have things to say. That's that's right. They do. They, may they have share message for they you. Like the things that they don't like, too, which is yeah. very interesting. <laughs> but I should also say that Adasi is a founding member of ICAMP, which is the International Coalition to Commemorate the African Ancestors of the Middle Passage. And so on the second weekend in June, we all came together. And so these same commemoration activities are taking place in Brooklyn, in Richmond, in Charleston, in New Orleans, in oh, Key wow. West, in San Francisco, uh, in overseas in uh, Nigeria, in um, Brazil, Barbados, Trinidad, Jamaica, and many other cities and countries. So we are all going to be remembering. And then on the Sunday, we ask our black churches and and religious institutions, black institutions, to take a few minutes to remember the ancestors, to dedicate that service on that Sunday. So it's a big commemoration, international commemoration weekend for us. That's beautiful. Well, I hope that, you know, the listeners and the viewers will be able to get in where they fit in in their city, maybe. Or, or even here. just take a minute at home yes. and just close your eyes and just remember them and send them a prayer and let them know that we acknowledge them because we survived, but half of them did not survive. Yes. And so, um, again, this is a, they can also go onto the ICAMP website to get information in terms of where a, a commemoration activities are taking place okay. in the cities. But if you're not, we ask that you just around noon, just take one minute or two minutes mm -hmm. and of silence and just say thank you and remember them. That's it. And uh, then, of course, for Adasi on Sunday, June 9th, we will be at the Smithsonian Museum of African Art. And we will feature our dear sister, Dr. Lisa Aubrey, who, as you know, her book, In Search of Bindia, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. she uh, did a lot of the, the research and traced a lot of the slave ships from Cameroon to the Americas. Um, as you mentioned, Cameroon was one of the largest sites where many of the ancestors were kidnapped from. And so she's going to talk about that, her research, um, you know, challenges. And now that site in particular, based on her research, is now a nationally recognized um, site. Yes. Yeah. 
So it's so funny. I told Yuri this story before, but so I went to Bimbia, right? But why did I go the day that it was raining and <laughs> muddy and rocks and we could not get our car up the hill? We just couldn't do it. So I'm like, how am I all the way in Cameroon on yeah. this day and I can't get up the hill? So I, I know that I will be back. I know that I will be back. Mm -hmm. And um, I look forward to that day. And um, I say that anybody who has traced their ancestry come out to the um, African History Museum, not, yes. the, not the museum, but the African History Museum from one to four on Sunday to hear um, the doctor talk about some more, the next iterations of her studies, because she's been doing this since yes. 10, you said, so it's almost 10 years. Mm -hmm. Yes, she wow. has. Yeah. So I did yeah. a little picture by the, the sign. So at least I have that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's okay. But you know, you, you did a lot because you, in, in having your journey be retold, then you're also taking us on that journey. So that helps us too. Yeah. You see, and so these are the stories that we must tell. And this is important to have the young people come and sit at the feet of those who have had that experience so they can experience it as well and then begin to plan for their own. Yes. So we are about to wrap up, but I okay. do want to have you share your Adasi guide, how to commemorate and where can people find that? So it's going to be up on the website. Now, forgive you, forgive us all. We always hear that the ancestors don't like technology. Yeah. <laughs> so we've been having a little bit of challenges with the site, but okay. definitely it will be available on the site. There's a ebook as well as those who want a hard copy. Okay. And it is our first publication, How Remember, Heal, and Restore, How to Commemorate the Ancestors. And it gives you some practical information, but it also helps you to better understand what libation means, what does the sacred space mean, mm -hmm. what is the, what, how significant the drum is to our community. And it, there's also a message in there for young people. How can young people, what can youth do to commemorate the ancestors? Okay. So it's some very practical information and it's a very minimum cost. Okay. Um, but we hope that people will just, you know, share it, you know, buy one and share it with someone who just have no idea what this means. What is all of this about? What's this, what's this about the commemoration ancestors? What does that mean to me? Right. You know? <laughs> right. It means everything to you. Everything. And to your future generations. Exactly. And to your future generations. Well, Yuri, I'm so grateful to that you asked me to answer oh, this. I, I, I'm grateful that I was able to do it. I we so appreciate you. you. You've Absolutely. always supported Adasi, and we know that you're you're uh, one of our honorary members. Okay, you don't have to ask for members. I still want to come and get some altar lessons. I have. My yes, you will. I want to come and be a part of this. You know, of the yes, group. we would I'm love for you do. to come and be a part of this. So I will be there okay, on Saturday, uh, yes. you know, the 8th, and I will be there on the 9th as well. So All I'm right. excited about both of those things. And um, again, please go to, just on here on Facebook, you can go to Adasi Ancestors. Mm -hmm. And then in a few days, once the technology gets back online, <laughs> it's yeah. AdasiAncestors.org. Exactly. That's it. So we are so grateful that you joined us. You have a little homework. Here we put Dr. Yep. Dr. Clark, A Great and Mighty Walk. Check it out. It's amazing. Check it it's out. Personality. And give if you're unable to join in any of the um, the commemorations around the uh, the nation or yes. internationally, mm -hmm. then do it in, in your heart. In your heart. Starting at noon and just give thanks. Yes, give thanks. Well, we, I give thanks for you. I give thanks for all the listeners and the viewers. And I will see you next time in the sanctuary, in the flow. Peace, peace and blessings. Thank you so much. And peace and blessings to everyone who's listening and looking. Yes. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.